welcome to leaf hydroponic farms as we discussed earlier today we will talk about the nutrient dispensation system the first and the foremost thing in the nuclear nutrient dispensation system is your reverse osmosis system this is an ro why to use an ro some people ask this question very frequently ro is used on account of two reason number one the ground water at every place is not the same somewhere it has more chemical somewhere it has less chemicals then the chemical constituent of the ground water also changes we can get it analyzed and prepare our nutrient accordingly but that will be a difficult process it will not be very easy so what we do is we bring the dissolved salt to a tolerable limit that tolerable limit is less than 50 ppm or you can say the ec should be less than 0.5 so once you bring it to that level then you can add nutrient of your choice into the water and prepare the nutrient solution accordingly now what kind of ro you should have some people talk that you should have an ro of 2000 liter per hour 5000 liter per hour no the size of the ro depends on what is the size of your farm up to 1500 square meter farm you need a reverse osmosis system of 500 liter per hour now should it be automatic should it not be automatic if you bring an automatic ro system with a panel and all that it will increase the cost considerably so you can have a simple ro system which should have a pre filter it should have a membrane then it should have the tanks where you can store the ro water storage should commensurate with your demand suppose your demand is 6000 liter per day then you should have a storage of 6000 liter at one place and 2 to 3000 liter at another place inside the farm so that is if your something happens to your ro you should have a backup of at least one day now what kind of ro you should have if your ground water is very high in tds in that case you need some pre filter also pre filter which is a bottle like this if you can see the blue bottle if it it is like this it is filled with some concrete or it is filled with charcoal or anything it filters the water previously then it comes to these two filters they will also filter the water and then it goes into the membrane from the membrane there are two outlets one outlet is the ro water where you can check the tds some some ro's give you the reading of the tds also automatically or the other outlet is where the waste water goes now the amount of the waste water will squarely depend upon one thing that is the quality of the water which you are putting into the ro if the quality of the water is 1000 or more tds then you will have almost 50% wastage and 50% water will be coming to your reverse uh, uh, tanks for the ro water if you have a tds of 200 less than 200 then this percentage will be less in that case you can throw this water which is coming out as a waste water into the same tank and do use it again and again okay now what we do sometime we use the uh, rain water if you collect rain water properly you will realize that the tds of the rain water is zero and the ec is also zero in that case there will be wastage water coming out of your ro but that wastage water will have a tds of 70 or 80 or 90 or even 100 which is not bad so you can simply dump the water ro water which is coming out of the ro as a waste water again into the tank and let it come back so like this you can recirculate till the water which is going out of the uh, ro has a tds of more than 1000 in that case you should not mix it because that will put a lot of load on your memory so you should have a capacity and uh, of the ro commensurate with your farm you can have 1500 liters a 15 uh, square meter farm you can have a 500 liter per hour ro if it is 1000 square meter farm uh, you can have even still 500 because 500 is the least uh, you know capacity which you can you should have on your farm if your farm is of a 1 acre in that 4000 square meter then you can have a 1000 liter per hour ro now 1000 liter per hour means it will give you 24000 liter of uh, you know the ro water 
which is quite sufficient for 24,000 plants in grow bag system, which is quite sufficient for about 40 to 50,000 plants in NFT. So you should not install RO of a capacity more than your need. Your need you can assess by calculating. We will put up a, another video how to calculate the need of RO water for a hydroponic system. So this is one component and a very, very important component of your hydroponic nutrient dispensation system. These are our tanks here. If you see one tank is 2000 liter capacity and we have four, four tanks where you can store, we can store 8000 liter of water. Then we have 1000 in one poly house, 1000 in the second poly house. So we have about 10,000 liter storage capacity for the R water, which is quite sufficient for us for one day. If something happens to the RO, it won't take more than one day to rectify it. So in that case, you can back up this uh, RO water from the storage capacity of installed on your farm. Like this, this is one of the component very, very important for hydroponic system. You cannot have a hydroponic system without installing a reverse osmosis system. Sometimes some people before the RO system install desalination or you can say a plant which will remove the salt from your water and then it is fed to the RO but it is exactly the same process. Now you should have an outlet from the RO where you can have RO water into buckets or into your nutrient mixing tanks. This reason is that you will be needing many times RO water for different purposes for spraying some insecticide, pesticide, growth hormone or some other uh, products on your on your uh, crop or you might be using it to wash your utensils, sterilize your different equipment. So you should have an outlet where you can get the RO water directly into the bucket or the tanks. Now we will talk about the dozatron. Now the second component of the nutrient dispensation system. This component is basically here or on the farm in order to ensure accurate mixing of various nutrients. We on our farm are following the stock solution system for nutrient dispensation system. You can have a direct addition also, but that requires a larger storage tank or that requires a different kind, which is not possible or which is not good for the hydroponic system. You should have a stock solution of tank A where you keep the uh, calcium nitrate and the iron or the potassium nitrate, three nitrate, uh, two nitrates and one iron. Then you have the tank B where you keep or where you mix your phosphates and sulfates. If you mix these in higher concentration, then they will precipitate. So that's why we keep them separately. We prepare stock solution in these two tanks and each tank is a 300 liter capacity. And out of that, we bring this into these two tanks, which are 120 liter. And these are the nutrient dispensation system, dozatron system. This is the French equipment dozatron. So if you, you can have two dozatron, you can have three dozatron or you can have four dozatron. But we are using here two dozatron system because we are using this for a uh, grow bag system. If you are using it for NFT, you can have another third dozatron to maintain your acidity. Now, what happens in the dozatron? Dozatron can be adjusted for mixing one liter into 100 liter, one liter into 128 liter, from 50 liter to 200 liters. One liter it will take from the A stock solution, one liter the second dozatron will take from the B stock solution, then these will go through it and then they come into this mixing cylinder where these will be mixed and then it goes into the system. We have two gauges, one is here the pressure gauge, the second pressure gauge is right in the beginning. So these two pressure gauges tell you the operating pressure of the dozatron and the operating pressure of your nutrient dispensation system because you need some optimum pressure for your pressure compensated emitter to work and for dozatron to work. Dozatron don't require any electricity. They are driven through the pressure of the water also. This motor here, the electric pump, which is one and a half horsepower, it feeds, the water comes through the filter and then it goes into the dozatron one, then it goes into the dozatron two. In the process picks up one liter from A stock solution, one liter from B stock solution, then it mixes into the cylinder and then it goes into the polyhouse for feeding the plants. Now, you should have your system in such a fashion that you have the option of flowing pure water also, RO water directly into your nutrient dispensation system. This is required because 
Sometimes you give washing to your grow bags because to avoid the uh, salt accumulation in the grow bags and that washing can be given only through the pure water. Now here we have four valves. If all the four valves are vertically oriented, then your pure water is going directly bypassing the dosatron. But if you turn these in this way, like this, or in a horizontal way, like this, like this, like this. In that case, the water will flow, flow through the dosatron. And once it will flow through the dosatron, you will hear the sound tick, 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 tick. This tick, tick will be faster. If the fast flow is there, it will be slower if the slower flow is there. Now, this dosatron is your limiting factor for nutrient dispensation. Each dosatron has a capacity of 6,000 liter per hour. Beyond that, you should not go. Otherwise, the pressure will drop. Pressure of dosatron at 2 bar or 3 bar is almost the same the pressure required for your uh, uh, PC emitter to work. So, you cannot have a section in your poly house or you cannot have stations in your poly house which are required more than 6000 liters. So, 6000 liter means 1500 emitters you can have in one section and you can have as many sections as possible of 1500 emitters. But 1500 is the last limit. So best thing is you go, don't go beyond 1200 meters per section. 1200 meters per section means about one meter serves two grow bags. So about 2400 grow bags can be uh, irrigated with, in one section with the help of a dosatron in one pulse. So like this, you will have to have a system which is little dynamic. Number one, your irrigation controller is dynamic. Your dosatron system establishment or you can set up is also dynamic. You can have the nutrient water or you can have the plain water. Once you have tested the EC and uh, pH of this water, it will not change for the grow bag system. But it will change for the NFT which you monitor in the poly house itself. There is no need to install costly automatic monitors. We will talk about the EC and pH at a later stage where I will tell you why you should not go for costly equipment because the cutting the cost in hydroponic is the only way to make it economical otherwise your farm will become uneconomical right from day one so this kind of arrangement will dispense the uh, this uh, nutrient very effectively very efficiently very correctly and accurate to the last milliliter so you can depend on it this is the kind of system you need for nutrient dispensation system now regarding the distribution in the poly house, we'll go there and talk about the solid. Now this is the third component of the nutrient dispensation system. These are the solenoid valves. These are two solenoid valves because we have two sections here. One section of 1200 bags and another section of the 1200 bags. Now when you put up these solenoid valves, you must ensure that before the solenoid valve, you put a union on both sides you know this wall has a union this wall has a union the reason for putting a union is that you can open the solenoid valve at any time now these solenoid valves are normally open okay or normally shut you can take any type of wall but these valves we use are normally shut so they will open only when they will get direction from the uh, irrigation controller these wires they go to the irrigation controller these are two uh, you know solenoid valve so two solenoid valve we have in the other poly house so three wires will go from here one wire is the common wire one wire is the individual wire of a particular solenoid valve they will go to the other poly house two more valve will join one will be the common and two will be the separate so there are four valves with the five you know uh, these uh, wires one wire is common to all the four valve and four wires are separate for the valve now these valves are normally shut so these valves you can have 24 volt valves also and 220 volt valve also since our controller here is 220 volt so we are using these 220 volt one inch valve why are we using one inch valve sometimes somebody will say you use two inch valve you use three inch valve no, you should not get into this because your limit is 6,000 liter per hour decided by the dosatron. 
so whatever the even if you have bigger valve they are of no use these 1 inch valve can easily let 6000 liter per hour pass through it so why do you should spend more on money on bigger valves the consultants or others will tell you no 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 you should have bigger valves they have more durability this and that this is all nonsense you should not go by that you should buy 1 inch valve for one section because the limit is 6000 liter per hour and these valve can very well support these valves are normally connected through these uh, special connectors which are waterproof but you don't worry about this because you are not putting them into in outside where there is a rain you are putting these valves inside the poly house where hardly there is any rain so you can set up these valves now if you like our videos you feel that our videos are of any use to you then please don't forget to like these videos don't forget to subscribe to our channel and don't forget to press the bell icon because you will get notified the moment we will uh, put a new video we are at the leaf hydroponic farms committed to disseminate hydroponic knowledge to every farmer in the country thank you very much